really see it as uh, there's great interest there. Uh, those who wanted to, uh, to hear the Leela, it will continue, but tomorrow at uh, the time uh, of the Bhagavatam class, it will be completed then. Uh, uh, let us just before we start uh, come back to the lecture of His Holiness Ke Swayam Bhagavan Keshava Maharaj who <coughs> spoke about, he quoted one author, Richard Rohr, where mm, the Richard Rohr said, most of the time answers are not answering the questions. And then he continued, that may be because people uh, a, a, a are satisfied with quick answers and, and but quick answers will only keep them at the surface only when they struggle with questions means engage with the question uh, be present with the question make the question their own question will they get the heart earned bread of realization, something like this. Um, uh, um, so I request you to continue in the question and answer session like this. Think about the questions and I'm sure many of the questions, if not all of them, could become your own questions if you are willing to engage with the question. Otherwise, you will just have an information, uh, so many informations in the mind, but uh, these will be informations you don't act upon. Uh, let me conclude with a short example. Mm, Prabhupada had told me I should become a cook, so therefore I tried, and I tried, and I tried. But I have only interest in eating, not in cooking. <laughs> uh, and therefore, my cooking skills have not surpassed simple carrot halava, fruit salad, uh, and bus. That's where, uh, and, and, and porridge, porridge, porridge. Uh, more I cannot uh, do. Now I am, and I'm also not interested to learn more because. But now, if I am placed in a country and there is no one there, the literature which I consider the most boring literature in the universe, that is cooking books, <laughs> uh, become of high interest for me. I will scan them, I will, well, how do we do this here? I might even <laughs> ask, uh, I might even overcome my unwillingness to telephone and place a telephone uh, call to uh, Gokushna's mother, who is an excellent cook uh, for uh, specific advices um, and so on. You know, when you have an interest in something, at that moment, a vital interest, I should say, ein lebendiges Interesse oder lebensnotwendiges Interesse, at that time you will engage with the subject, like in this example, cooking, in an entirely different way than if you have no in interest in it. So uh, I would uh, request you, because we are already, uh, we, ha uh, we have had uh, many wonderful answers, uh, to make a specific endeavor to r really listen to the question, what is the, the questioner uh, is asking, see if that is uh, touching on something in you that you would like to have an answer on, and then uh, uh, take great interest in the uh, answer, because I really feel with uh, 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 Keshava Maharaj on the left with this insightful, uh, practical uh, 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 philosophy, uh, um, and uh, Hari Parshat Prabhu with this amazing insights into the Shastras, we can get some very good answers and some very uh, relevant answers. So, yes, so let us continue like this. It's going well, so we should perhaps 
to warm up everything, start with Mathurananda, who must have thought about his questions ten <laughs> times already <laughs> in the pause. I was hoping to finish the session, not to start it. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for this opportunity, this incredible opportunity to ask a question to such a esteemed, I mean, we can, what to say? I really wanted to use this opportunity uh, something that has stirred in my heart during this bhakti immersion uh, as a little bit of a opposing force, so to say. Uh, as we are immersed in, in the rasa of, of Krishna and Vrindavan, uh, one is hard pressed to desire any other relationship with the, with the Lord other than that. And um, this is now at odds with the idea of Ishtadev, with some, you know, other relationship with Krishna or with, with Ram or with Nirsimha or I would almost, honestly, I'm afraid even to uh, investigate this, not to be cheated out of this highest <coughs> rasa and, and most pleasing to the Lord that is experienced by uh, residents of Rindavan. Uh, so, if you can illuminate something on this, I would be very grateful. Mm -hmm. yeah. so who is, who is it aimed for? Uh, perhaps Hari I Pasha. I even imagine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds that Hari Pasha should start. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't see the problem. I think it is the success of the retreat <laughs> <laughs> that you are afraid of investigating other relationships. <laughs> <laughs> we succeeded in what we set out to achieve. <laughs> but uh, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami in his prayers often expresses the idea that now I do not even want to look at Dwaraka and I do not want to consider any other service. So this idea is already deep rooted within the tradition. I guess uh, Sangat Sanjayate Kaman that the association that we have determines the desires that we have. So since we heard a lot of holy pastime in Vrindavan from Maharaj and since there were some verses from Sri Rupa Goswami being spoken therefore a particular emotion might have stirred in the heart why not take some time and see if it persists and uh, if it persists then maybe it is worth cultivating and there are other sadhus, Gaudiya Vaishnava sadhus within our movement who are also interested in other rasas with Sri Krishna. I am not sure with Ram or anything because the society is named in a biased way. <laughs> <coughs> so International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So the bias starts from the very name itself. But this bias is not, there is nothing wrong in this bias because the term bias is often misunderstood. This is a very nice, uh, it is very nice to have this bias towards Sri Krishna because this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also had. But there are, Gaudiya Vaishnavism allows one to explore various other relationships except for one which is Shantaras. Shantaras or neutrality has been rejected by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is given in the Chaitanya Charitamritam. So other relationships are still acceptable. Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, Madhurya. And there are many sadhus in Gaudiya Vaishnavism who specialize in these particular rasas. There are literature in Gaudiya Vaishnavism such as Preyo Bhakti Rasaranava, which is like the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu specially for Sakya Ras. So, but Shantaras is not allowed. There is, it is clearly mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I will <coughs> quote this and then I will quickly finish. 
शांतेर स्वभाव कृष्णे ममता गंधहीन परम ब्रह्म परमात्मा ज्ञान प्रवीण दिस इज मध्य लीला नाइनटीन पॉइंट टू वन एट शुल प्रभुपाद सेज इट इज द नेचर ऑफ शांतरस दैट नॉट इवन द स्मॉलेस्ट इंटीमसी एक्जिस्ट रादर नॉलेज ऑफ इम्पर्सनल ब्राह्मण एंड लोकलाइज परमात्मा इज प्रोमिनेंट एंड देर फॉर चेतने महाप्रभु डिड नॉट कम टू गिव फाइव रसस चेतने महाप्रभु चारी भाव that he came to give four rasas one rasa is excluded which is shantaras because there is no feeling of belongingness i and mine in relationship with krishna other rasas can be explored in the association of sadhus who are themselves connoisseurs of that particular rasa but ultimately you will have to settle down and be biased towards one rasa <laughs> so that is what i would like to say all right thank you uh just a short uh um answer or um, you remember the key verse for the bhagavad gita the over think of me and uh, become my devotee of uh, your worship to me and of uh, your obeisances to me and you will come to me it's very interesting how shila prabhupad com- comments this i will read to you from the second uh, paragraph of his purport these words stress that one should concentrate his mind upon krishna the very form with two hands carrying a flute uh, do you remember where krishna carries a flute and where does he not carry a flute and yes yeah, everywhere else yes <laughs> Uh, so this is quite exclusive these words stress that one should concentrate his mind upon krishna the very form with two hands carrying a flute the bluish boy <coughs> with a beautiful face and what is in his hair a peacock feather yes there are descriptions of krishna found in the brahma sanghita and other literatures uh, do you remember uh, every morning we sing two verses from the brahma samhita which are clearly glorifying the lord of vrindavan with blooming and blossoming eyes with holding a flute venum kvanantam aravinda dalaya taksham and if we uh, if these verses appear in jiva goswami's description he says these are two verses are the way we vaishnavas meditate about krishna and his form no this is uh, and every morning it's right before our nose so to say or right before our eyes and so on so there are many descriptions prabhupad says found in the brahma samhita and other literatures and then he says one should fix his mind on this original form of godhead krishna now fasten your seat belt one should not even divert his attention to other forms of the lord the lord has multi multi forms as vishnu narayan <coughs> rama varaha etc but a devotee should concentrate his mind on the form that was present before arjun concentrating of the mind on the form of krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge so the way i have always approached this that oh there is a lot of stress in our movement on brindavan krishna braj krishna and uh, and uh, then the deities which are worshiped in most of the central altars are radha and krishna deities i always was that what if i'm a ram bhakta uh, i also uh, hanuman is wonderful um, and and so on what if i'm this or that uh, mm, on a personal level i always think in this life i've met a, a pure krishna devotee radha krishna devotee shila prabhupad and i don't think there is an accident that i was landing in his harbor and i'm trained uh, by him to get into the boat where he is the captain and uh, that he will bring me over the ocean 
of uh, samsara. I think that's not uh, by chance. And then on, a, on a another level, uh, that is perhaps the synchrist, the, 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 I don't just know the English word for this, but the very, the person who, do, uh, who, who likes to be a little vast in his uh, understanding. I, I think uh, where Krishna, my Krishna appears in, uh, and jumps out of the pillar and uh, dist- and and protects his Bhakta Prahlad. And he has angry eyes uh, and the head of a lion. Wonderful how Krishna uh, is um, so protective. In other words, uh, I've settled m- my case with the with the consideration I was brought in this life by the Lord to a pure um, uh, Radha Krishna Bhakta, and also I see I, I don't will not miss Ram or <coughs> Nishinga Dev. They are this my uh, the same Krishna who appears in various forms for various pastimes. Yes, so Hare Krishna. very beautiful answers. I'll just maybe add one other thought. Hari Parishad Prabhu was beautifully mentioning about God's unfulfilled desires and how the Lord ultimately comes in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Radha Bhava Dyuti Suvalitam Krishna Nomi Swarupam to experience Radha Bhav. So Mahaprabhu comes to Jagannath Puri which is known as Viraha Shetra. And here he comes to intensify and focus his um, meditation and internal relish of Srimati Radharani's uh, intense loving feeling towards Krishna. And we know that in the Gambira he was being nourished by the support of Ramananda Rai and Swarup Damodar. But the very interesting thing is that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri was also meeting with Gadada Pandit and with Gadada Pandit he was discussing Srimad Bhagavatam and specifically with Gadada Pandit he was discussing Srimad Bhagavatam and discussing the pastimes of Dhruva and Prahlad that's very very I find that an extremely deep point that the Bhagavatam is nourishing us in all ways when we hear about the fearlessness of Prahlad the deep faith when we hear about the determination of Dhruva this is nourishing also our relationship with Krishna in Vrindavan I remember once being in Vrindavan and someone, I can't remember who it was, he was giving a class on the, on the Vyasasana and he said, Gopi Bhav, you want to know what Gopi Bhav is? Gopi Bhav means at the age of 70 years old, you get on a ship with no money, not good health, no <laughs> friends and you turn up to a foreign place after having two heart attacks on a ship and you start preaching to the whole world. That is Gopi Bhav. So, so when we think of Krishna in Vrindavan, when we think of Gopi Bhav, often we think of very, we think of those uh, very esoteric emotions and uh, Anubhavs. But what is underpinning Gopi Bhav is a complete fearlessness, a complete flexibility, a complete uh, sense of being fully available, a deep faith, a deep determination. Um, And all the stories of the Bhagavatam are nourishing these moods within us of how we relate to Krishna. So I just wanted to add this as also a point to consider that um, in our endeavors to connect deeply with Krishna in Vrindavan, all the characters of the Bhagavatam and the incredible uh, qualities that they exude um, can nourish that relationship in their own unique way.
Hare Krishna, we have just pulled a genie out of the uh, clay pot. You will, <laughs> and it was. It is. Um, <laughs> you will. You will laugh, and you will cry when you hear that question. <laughs> For Hari Parshad Dash, <laughs> what is your opinion on the fall of the Jiva? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> See, there are various aspects. The question is very loaded. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> it's so loaded because in 1995, there is a GBC resolution on this particular topic. <laughs> <laughs> and I am aware of the GBC resolution. And I'm aware that the GBC resolution says that you are not supposed to take any other position besides the one specified in the resolution. <laughs> so, <coughs> the question is giving me some freedom, what is your opinion? <laughs> In my life, I have had uh, various Shiksha influences. Srila Prabhupada spoke in a variety of ways on this particular subject matter. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada said that we were in Krishna Leela and uh, because we were, we developed some emotion which was not suitable for Krishna Leela, therefore we fell from there. At other times, Srila Prabhupada said that in his purport to the Srimad Bhagavatam, he said that nobody falls from the spiritual world. So, <laughs> I wish if Srila Prabhupada would be present here, then I would ask, say the same thing that Arjun said to Krishna in the third chapter. Your mixed words are, <laughs> are putting me in some sort of doubt. Because Krishna spoke mixed words in the second chapter and you know. and uh, But I have then other Shiksha Gurus who are very much fixed on the point that the jiva never ever falls from the spiritual world and those shiksha gurus also belong to this very society so i will do a very big disadvantage to my guru janas and my own diksha guru is of the opinion that the jiva doesn't fall so i will do a very big disservice to them if i take a contrary position but I like to respect all positions and uh, I am fully respectful of the position that the GBC has taken in this regard. Yet at the same time, my personal inclination is more towards the positions that have been taken by my Guru Janas in this matter. That is what I would like to say. Satyam Bruyat. Priyam Bruyat, Ma Bruyat Satyam Apriyam. Speak the truth, speak the palatable truth, don't speak any unpalatable truth. So that is what I would like to say because Brahmana means one should not cheat others. So in that spirit I cannot lie to any of you. The question is a very loaded question, I would say. 
and it is nothing to do with the topics that were <laughs> covered in the <laughs> seminar <laughs> okay i don't know where the question came ideally actually the questions are supposed to be from what happened in the seminars <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know where the question came from so uh, believe me uh, the gbc is still trying to sort out the issue as we are speaking uh, we are still the gbc is still trying to sort out the issue so i will not say more on that i have given you i respect all the opinions Um, and uh, including the official position and but also i have my personal inner understandings about the topic which i don't want to express here because then the entire topic will change and uh, we will end on a difficult note so we i don't i don't want to do that <laughs> and uh, that is what i would like to say uh, does anybody uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do to make Radha Rani happy? Most of all, what should we avoid not to make her sad or angry? No, 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 well, I'm not so. Do you, you know. You know. <laughs> in this age of uh, kali yuga as i was mentioning krishna comes and accepts the mood of shrimati radharani radharani's uh, deep desire is to bring everyone to krishna um making arrangements radharani is giving a recommendation i think maharaj he read this beautiful paragraph yesterday where Shila Prabhupada says uh, Krishna may say patram pushpam phalam to yam offer me a flower but rather what the devotee will do is he'll give the flower to Shrimati Radharani and when Shrimati Radharani offers that flower to Krishna then Krishna definitely will accept it so Shrimati Radharani is giving the recommendation and uh, connecting all the jivas to Krishna And so in the mood of Shila Prabhupada what can we do to make uh, Shrimati Radharani uh, happy most of all do exactly what Shila Prabhupada did when Shila Prabhupada was a young boy then his father whenever any sadhu would come then Shila Prabhupada would say to the sadhu please bless my son that he becomes uh, a devotee of Shrimati Radharani and uh, indeed shila prabhupad was the greatest uh, devotee of shrimati radharani because he dedicated his life to uh, sharing krishna consciousness and opening the doors to vrindavan for the whole world to enter shila prabhupad was the ambassador of vrindavan and so uh, in my understanding uh, what we can do to make shrimati radharani uh, most happy is to uh, janma sartha kakarikar pada upakar uh, make your life successful become a pure devotee um, don't desire to go back to godhead <laughs> but rather be happy to stay in the material world and uh, serve krishna and perhaps of all ways to serve krishna through uh, shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's movement as given to us by shila prabhupad and uh, <coughs> make the whole world krishna conscious hari krishna wonderful wonderful uh, let us again turn to the audience and not be fixed on the pot alone uh, yes i pandora's <laughs> box yes uh, uh, i saw you for a long time i don't know your name please uh, give uh, uh, the smartity uh, Tell uh, what is it called? A microphone. Hi Krishna, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to ask about the phrase which was mentioned earlier: uh, "Let let go, let God." Uh, about the topic of control, which we're supposed to to to, to get rid of. 
to not want slip in the mood of control. But sometimes I wonder how to distinguish between control and perseverance because sometimes I feel that when Krishna, when, when we have maybe failures and difficulties, obstacles and something, perhaps Krishna is saying, don't go that, that direction. Or maybe he might be saying, he might be expecting us to make effort and to persevere in that direction. So, um, I don't know if that is clear. So as I understand, uh, Mataji, what you're asking is that um, in life we have to endeavor, we have to make efforts. At the same time we say, uh, learn to let go. So how do we know uh, if there's a particular course of activity, whether we should keep trying and keep going and keep endeavoring or whether we should just let go and accept it's Krishna's plan? How do we know how to make that call? Yeah, this is difficult because uh, there could be many Krishna conscious decisions that we can make in any given situation. For example, if someone is on the street distributing books, this has often happened to me. So you're in the street distributing books and for three hours nobody is taking a book. So option A, stay there is Krishna's test. He's seeing how determined you are, just keep going, fight the battle. <laughs> Option B, use your intelligence, it's not a good spot in the town. <laughs> Go down the street and try somewhere different. Option C, take a break and chant one round of japa. <laughs> Option D, call it a day. So which one is the one that Krishna wants us to take? Which one is the Krishna conscious decision? In one sense we could say there is an element of Krishna consciousness uh, in all of those, maybe even D, as long as you're going to do something devotional. Um, sometimes Srila Prabhupada walked away. When there were difficulties in Jansi and there were some complications with obtaining that temple, then Srila Prabhupada looked up, he looked at Krishna and he said, Krishna, it seems you have another plan, too many complications here, let me walk away. But then when Srila Prabhupada was in Juhu and there were complications there, perhaps complications which were ten times worse, a situation in which even the devotees were telling Srila Prabhupada, Krishna is telling us, just get out of here. Prabhupada said, no, I made a promise to Radha Ras Bihari, I'm going to build a temple here. And Prabhupada stayed. And now that temple is our most expensive real estate in the whole of ISKCON. Clearly, Srila Prabhupada was connected with the Paramatma. In fact, there's a, an unpublished letter in the BBT that they found some years ago where Prabhupada talks about Juhu. And he writes in that letter, Actually, I should have walked away from this project long ago. But Krishna was inspiring me. Continue, continue. So, at the perfectional stage, the devotee is being guided by Krishna. Mata, smritir, jnana, mapo, hanam, cha. Krishna is telling the devotee, do like this, do like this. And Jitatmana, Prashantasya, Paramatma, Samahita. When we've conquered our mind, then we can receive that connection from Paramatma and that dictation to know what to do. But until we reach that point, uh, we simply have to use our intelligence, number one, and we have to uh, seek guidance, number two. And in some situations, it's over endeavor to just keep trying and, you know, and in some situations, uh, Krishna is testing you and wants you to go on. So I think it just requires that level of introspection in any given situation and also uh, advice from devotees uh, who will tell you, maybe it's time to just move on to something else or no, no, you should stay. Something is coming, but you have to bear these obstacles for now. And one way or the other, that guidance and uh, introspection will bring us to the right conclusion. I don't know if that helps, does that? Yeah, 
And uh, when you make such a decision where you uh, depend on the guidance of the Lord or the devotees, you will see in more, most cases you will feel relieved and you will know, Achya, this is the right thing. This, ah, uh, oh, I'm so happy. We, we had such a situation just a few days ago where we made a very difficult uh, decision which also will be expensive to realize that decision. Uh, and But all concerned felt, yes, ah, we will live with this decision. This is the right thing to do. I, in other words, some often some feeling of relief confirms that you have done the right thing. Uh, good. I saw pra 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 Pratik, yes, Pratik, please ask your question. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, my question is to uh, request the Prabhu. So it's about the topic, don't decide to go back to Godhead. <laughs> so, of course, uh, I don't know, maybe you have already covered this in your lectures, but it's something unclear for me yet. <coughs> so, Bhagavad Gita has a lot of verses that talks about this topic. Like Krishna says, you know, do this, you come to me, or you know, worship me, you come to me. Or there are a lot of verses that addresses this, or about uh, going back, reaching him. So, what should be our perspective uh, to address these verses that, you know, something that we can get from these verses, you know? Bhagavad Gita is speaking about many levels of yoga, many levels of spirituality, beginning from offer your prescribed duties to me and gradually you will get purified. That is called Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga is in itself not a platform of liberation. It has to lead to a higher platform, Jnana or Bhakti Yoga. In Bhakti Yoga, there are many statements where Krishna says, do this and you will come to me. A devotee who does this attains me. Ma me veshyasi. Man mana bhav mad bhakto mad yaji ma. Ma me veshyasi. Then you will certainly come to me. That's a good motivation. But in the at the end of the day, the Srimad Bhagavatam is considered to be a further development of thought by Sri Vyasadeva because it is, Srila Prabhupada classified it as graduate study after Bhagavad Gita. In the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, all desires are rejected. Dharma, Projita, Kaita, Botra. And Sridhar Swami says even the desire for liberation is rejected at this point of time. So religion often takes on a transactional form. Do this and I will give you this. Do that and I will give you that. Do we want transactional religion? That is to be determined by us and there are individuals who want that that's okay we don't say but do we personally want our relationship with Krishna to be transactional oh Krishna I did this so you give me that so that is not the mood of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas other devotees may be having that mood it is very respect worthy anybody who is in any way connected to Sri Krishna even through karma yoga is worthy of respect but uh, then we need to have our specific mood and therefore i highlighted the fact that the gaudiya vaishnava mood is to also say no to liberation and it's not only the gaudiya vaishnava mood it's a mood of the bhagavatam in the very beginning to say no to liberation but if somebody wants that it's okay akamaha sarva kamo va and third is Moksha Kama, Udharadhi. All sorts of transactional people. Tivrena Bhakti Yogena, Yajeta Purusham Param. So, all sorts of people. I think I'll show you the verse so that it becomes clear to you. Have you seen this verse? So, Akama Sarva Kama? No? No. So, that I'll show you. This is uh, Bhagavatam 2310. Akamaha Sarva Kamo Va Moksha Kama Udharadhi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purusha Param Akamaha 
if you have no desires you don't want anything in exchange for sarva kama va if you have all the material desires and moksha kama if you have desire for liberation you see moksha kama is placed in a separate category because it is still a kama it is still a desire and one who has no desire is termed as akama so which category do we want our bhakti to be in amongst these three akama sarva kama moksha kama no desire all material desires or desire to go back home back to godhead see somebody said akama see there i'm trying to influence people now <laughs> <laughs> so everybody can decide shrimad bhagavatam gives validity the verse gives validity to all these categories of people how can i say no when the bhagavatam itself says yes but the inner mood of vyasadev is to reject even the desire for liberation so that is what it is i hope that satisfies your query to some degree all right thank you there is one devotee uh, i also see now oh, you this young devotee yes uh, yes please what is your good name shama sundar shama sundar please ask your question hi krishna uh, i had a, a question especially relevant uh, to the police retreat when the devotees come together and uh, you associate to live in a room with 20 people sleeping side to side and uh, when you come close to people sometimes uh, there is a lot of uh, fault finding there is a lot of different things going on in the mind <coughs> and i have m- many times been instructed and uh, heard that you should be a genuine as a devotee be be, be real as genuine. genuine and be real as you also spoke about regarding the question order such as uh, so how but how do we actually be genuineness about this do, do we just uh, say say what I'm, what is in our mind because i don't think that's then i would have no friends no <laughs> <laughs> so how how do we, how do we, how, how can we be genuineness about this in our uh, dealings with other devotees and uh, in our service to krishna <coughs> this is a practical a practic a practice oriented question mm. i think we need to understand uh, that a devotee has two sides in them mm. the side that they are uh wanting to come closer to krishna they want to serve him they want to please him and then a very human side how they were before what they like to eat mm, if they snore in the night or not mm, uh 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 their inclinations to uh, argument or to a peaceful mood and so on so there are always two two mm, uh and uh, uh i do remember uh, gogovinda maharaj would very often speak about two types of vision vision the spiritual vision uh, the aparavicha and uh, no sorry the paravicha and the mm, apparent vision the uh apara uh, vicha the mm, and you really have to see wh- what what vision do you take mm, i i must also uh, i was very confronted when i came to the mm, devotees in the very beginning and i had no peace uh, because i came from a total social different social background they spoke mostly english they were from a mostly from a hippie uh, uh background which i was only looking uh with all the reverence from the distance uh, <laughs> you know uh, and uh, and uh, yeah and they took every day a cold shower in the morning i was uh, 
custom to take a shower once a week, but a ba in a bathing tub, you know, where it was nice and and uh, and um, <laughs> I was li lying in my own. Anyways, uh, so uh, so very much different, and it was very difficult for me. Uh, and I, I thought, I, I can't live with these people. They are so different. It's just so different. The way they talk, the way they... Uh, you know, when, when I saw them f bowing down on the floor, what are you doing? What are you searching for? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was really very dif difficult. And the difficulty, the, uh, yeah, they are still the devotees are very different. They laugh at different places. Uh, I would never laugh at that place. I would laugh at another place. And uh, very different. But I prefer to look at the devotees, uh, the, the spiritual side of, of them, that they are they came here, all of you came here to come closer to Krishna, you relish Krishna consciousness so much, wow, you g just don't get tired or only a little tired um, from time to time and uh, so on. And I prefer to see that. The human, I think sometimes we have wrong expectations. We think all of a sudden a human being turns into an angel when a uh, Gandhava, when he comes in. But they will always be human beings. There will always be dif differences and so on. And, and uh, this vision where you see differences uh, is in the mode of passion, mm, a rajasic view. But I like to go the sattvic view that is where I see the oneness, the, the oneness, or we don't like this word, the, the mm, you know, where, where we can agree, you know, the, and so on. You have to make the choice. You have to make the choice anyways in your life. Will you see things in a material way or in a spiritual way? And devotees offer the, or your interactions with devotees are the best training ground anyone can imagine <laughs> to learn to choose the spiritual vision. Because if you don't, you're lost. <laughs> they, are, they are different. They will be different. See, we have people from so many social backgrounds here, from so many countries, from so many... Uh, <laughs> so many... Mm, we found that out in our community when there was COVID. Mm. One side of our community, no, there is no COVID. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just an invention of uh, who? Donald new Trump or, or <laughs> some, uh, someone? Uh, no, not Donald Trump, new someone. Uh, new world order. New world order, yeah. <laughs> uh, others, <laughs> others had a total different uh, opinion. And, and I, I was asked, what do you, is your opinion? And I said, mm, mm, I'm a spiritual soul. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to connect with Krishna. And I don't take any, uh, any size. Like. If you will ask dev devotees about the conflict, any type of conflict where they are involved, they have different uh, word conflicts, different views, because they're different human beings. They're wired. But there is one view where we all agree. Let's chant. Let's eat prasadam. Let's go to the lectures. And that's what we are. We are uh, basically about this. Why go for lower things? That, that I didn't come to find, <coughs> you know, <laughs> Let us say, I, I came to find a society where I can uh, practice spiritual life and service, and that there's every opportunity here for this. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, there, let us now turn to the... Uh, yes, please, Madhuji, uh, we have a microphone for you. Especially to become sincere. 
So how do we cultivate the feeling of desperation to go deep in hearing and chanting? Because during, and also a couple of weeks after a retreat like this, I feel so much enthused and have so many ideas how to do better. And I really feel a transformation is happening in the heart, and I'm very grateful. But somehow or other, I feel like I'm slipping away again after a couple of weeks, going back to my usual routine. And I feel that I slip back into old patterns. And what I heard from the class is that it requires regular and relentless hearing and chanting. And I think that's also my problem. But somehow I feel OK with it. So I feel like um, the mediocrity that I put into it is OK, because I'm not being shunned by the movement, um, which is great also. I'm happy to be here. But at the same time, I don't have the, the feeling of desperation to actually change. And I think that's also the attitude that I'm missing, right? The sincerity to actually ch want to change. So it's difficult to break the habits, even after hearing so many wonderful lectures on this. <coughs> so again, how do we cultivate the feeling of desperation to become sincere? <clears throat> it's amazing when we read about the amazing saints in our tradition. This morning we were giving the Japa reflection and we were talking about how Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, Nityananda Prabhu came to him in a dream. And what did Nityananda Prabhu say to him? Are are Krishnadas nakaraha bhai vrindavanayahataha sarvalabhya hai O oh, Krishna Das, don't fear, don't have any uncertainty in your mind when you wake up the next day. Just go to Vrindavan and in Vrindavan you will obtain everything that your heart desires. The amazing thing is that when Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami got up the next morning there was no hesitation, he just moved. When Naratam Das Thakur, Nityananda Prabhu came to him in a dream and told him to go to the Padma River to benefit and avail of the liquid form of Prema that Mahaprabhu had deposited there, there was no hesitation. This procrastination is uh, our biggest problem. It seems to me that we procrastinate when there's a few things that are missing in our life. We procrastinate number one because the goal <coughs> hasn't captured our heart uh, strongly enough. Um, to quote one of the Acharyas of our time, Frederick Nietzsche, <coughs> who said, when your why is deep enough, then you can contend with any how and what. So the first thing is that the desperation and that level of movement, of dedication towards what we're doing can only happen when the goal that we seek has become so deeply implanted within our hearts and has enchanted our mind. But even when we have a goal, it seems the second reason why we may procrastinate is because we don't have a clear plan and a clear idea of how we're going to reach that goal. We need to know, this is where I want to be, that's my cherished destination, but what do I need to do tomorrow? What do I need to do after one month? What do I need to do after six months? What is my roadmap there? If we don't have a step-by-step -step plan of how to move towards our cherished destination, then we tend to procrastinate. But even when we know the goal and we have a plan and we know what we need to do, we may still procrastinate if we don't have the right environment around us to give us the confidence 
and the inspiration to walk that path and therefore often what we're lacking is the right association, the right environment, the right um, situation around us to walk that journey. So I think when we go away from a retreat like this, we need to instill that goal. Aradhyo Bhagavan Vrajay Satanayas Dharma Vrindavanam Yes, we want to reach uh, our heart needs to reach Krishna, uh, the son of Nanda Maharaj who resides in Vrindavan. Then we need to have a very clear plan of what does that mean? What do I have to do in my life to walk there? And then we have to create the environment around us that gives us the confidence and the um, empowerment to then walk that journey. And I think when we do that, um, then we can move towards where we want to move. These are some thoughts. Wonderful. Very, very nice. Would you like to address this point also, or do you feel it's I covered? It's, I think it's heavy. We should take something from the pot. Is it? Okay. Mm. <coughs> so, here is something from the pot. Uh, um, could you please, uh, um, can you read? It is it B. Is it bona? Sorry, he was writing, then he started writing again. All right. <laughs> is it bona fide to sing? He, he cut the sing to use the word Jaya. For example, Jai Radha Sham Sundar Jai Nitai at the end of Artis because devotees once asked Prabhupada. If they can sing something like this and Prabhupada said Hare Krishna Mahamantra is enough. His Holiness <laughs> 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 well, Shachinandan Maharaj ki. <laughs> you, you are very intelligent. <laughs> You are very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm being given the loaded questions. <laughs> so, I don't see an issue in this because this is a statement that you know, Prabhupada uh, was once asked if they can sing something like this and Prabhupada said Hare Krishna Mahamantra is enough. There is a specific context to that question. Devotees used to like to sing Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda and they asked if they can turn this into a separate mantra that can be regularly chanted. In reply to this Srila Prabhupada said no Hare Krishna Mahamantra is enough. Now that reply is taken out of context and if it is you know made into a general principle then that is not justified the reason being the same Srila Prabhupada introduced Prema Dhvani prayers at the end of every Aarti and how do Prema Dhvani prayers begin? Yeah. Jai and how do they end? Yeah. and what is in between? So Srila Prabhupada will not speak against him, his own self, right? <laughs> so that particular question has a particular context and devoid of the context it can turn into a misapplied instruction. So th thank you Krishna, I remembered the context. <laughs> <laughs> the, the loaded questions are coming from the pot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is clear because they, they don't write the name. Yeah. It's anonymous. Yes. <laughs> it's like questions you, comments you get on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> These are questions without repercussions. So, <laughs> so, anyways, yes. 
<laughs> yes. Ha- Hare Krishna, there's Nikon Yavasini. We will have a microphone for you. I think it is mentioned uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Radha Krishna Eka Atma <coughs> This verse is in the meter uh, Manda Kranta Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritir Ladini Shakti Rasma De Katmana Vapibhupura De Habedam Gatautau Chaitanyakyam Prakata Maduna Tadvayam Chaikyam Aptam Radha Bhava Dutisabulitam Naumi Krishna Swarupam This is Adilila 1.5 where it is specified 
ऑल्दो राधा आर कृष्णा इन वन इन देर आइडेंटिटी प्रीवियसली दे सेपरेटेड देम सेल्स नाउ दीज टू ट्रांसेंडेंटल आइडेंटिटीज हैव अगेन यूनाइटेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य सो द थिंग इज फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ पास टाइम्स इट इज स्पोकन दैट दे हैड टू आई देन दे बिकेम वन एंड देन दे अगेन बिकेम टू in the spiritual world everything is supposed to be eternal if something loses its eternality in the spiritual world then it cannot be a part of the spiritual world so when it says here that although they are previously they separated then they united it is speaking about previous appearances of chaitanya mahaprabhu in the material world previous appearances of radha krishna in the material world it is not speaking of anything in the spiritual world in the spiritual world they are eternally radha and krishna they are also eternally shri chaitanya mahaprabhu but in the material world when they appear previously means in the previous day of brahma they were different then they again combined then again they have became different again they have combined as chaitanya mahaprabhu so this is only in reference to what goes on in the material world in the spiritual world they are simultaneously separate and simultaneously one the material world has six changes which do not happen in the spiritual world jayate asti vardate viparnamate apakshiyate nashyati jayate something takes birth that only happens here in the material world not in the spiritual world asti it exists only for some time that is not uh, in the spiritual world it exists eternally vardate something increases in size permanently that is not what happens and viparinamate it permanently transforms into something else it happens only in the material world apakshiyate it dwindles nashyati it gets destroyed these are the six changes of the material world which are not present in the spiritual world even if the changes are seen in the spiritual world they are for the purpose of leela they are not permanent changes so that is what can be said about this i hope this answer satisfies your query just one more part so can we be can we be separated from the devotees of radha and krishna and no chaitanya yeah the gor ganosh desh tipika is uh, what is that um, the praman is given in the writings of shri narottam das thakur gaura prema rasarnave seita range je badube sei radha ma dhav antaranga so gaura prema rasarnave you know one who actually dives in the waves of ocean of lord chaitanya's prema immediately becomes a confidential devotee of shri shri radha madhav this is the answer to your query yeah, why not so har krishna a quick uh, glance on the wrist watch uh, <laughs> uh i would say we go now for the very last question um i don't know how to choose maybe i close the eye <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know but how would you choose uh, well <laughs> pot <laughs> oh, what <laughs> <laughs> no pot no pot <laughs> Krishna how do we do this <laughs> I I'm sorry I I'm not partial but this devotee has so much uh, so long he has his arm up isn't it <laughs> No <laughs> No not really <laughs> Oh Krishna I I let us do something controversial. I go to the editor of the magazine Tatva Viveka. Uh, that is Ramdas. He is in the back. 
uh, so because the people in the back had no and he is he is an editor uh, so <laughs> Hare Krishna uh, all of you who, who looked at me I know Punamasi looked at me with uh, these eyes oh please 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 uh, uh, let us listen very carefully to this question perhaps it's your question also <laughs> or a shadow of, uh, of the question Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, yes, I hope it's a, it's a relevant question. It's more about the theological part of our discussion. A uh, question to Hare Krishna. Yeah, um, I think you are uh, speaking about the Rasas, Bhakti Ras, and you are very much concerned about this topic. I think it's also a very important topic for us to continue in our bhakti. So you also spoke about the different rasas. And rasa actually exists in two versions, ras and ras, isn't it? So the ras with the short a and the ras with the long a, ras. So can you tell something about the difference of these two types of ras? <laughs> The term rasa is a technical term defined by the connoisseurs of rasa including Srila Rupa Goswami. Vibhavair anubhavaischa sattvikair vyabhichari bihi. That is the technical definition in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. That within the heart of a devotee there is something called as sthai bhav, permanent emotion towards Krishna. When that bhava, permanent emotion is nourished by various other factors, vibhava, anubhava, sattvic bhava, vyabhichari bhavas, it becomes more flavorable and turns into rasa. A small example of that is somebody watching a drama of, let's say, Sri Ram Leela. The, somebody sitting in the audience and some person is playing the character of Sri Ram. Sri Ram and Bharat is visiting him because Bharat wants to take him back to the kingdom. Sri Ram says, I will not go. I have taken a vow now. So Bharat takes the slippers of Sri Ram and puts it on his head. At that point of time, some people in the audience start crying. So what has happened here? So what has happened is the person who is sitting in the audience is Sahriday, very like-minded and has empathized with Bharat and because of having empathized with the, not with Bharat but the person who is playing the character of Bharat and that person also is empathizing with the actual Bharat and because of that the emotions which are portrayed by the character suddenly jump into the heart of the like-minded person and then the like-minded person has a transcendental experience that takes over and then some resultant emotions which are called anubhav come out so this entire experience is called rasa <coughs> rasa is a technical term which is also defined as gopinam nritya visheshaha the a special type of dance performed by the cowherd community is called rasa so this is uh, a, an, again a technical term rasa or you can say rasanam samuha rasa uh, conglomeration of various rasas is rasa but originally ras <laughs> refers to a circular dance uh, which is performed mainly by the cowherd community and uh, traditionally in india so that is what rasa is today this rasa has if you go to in india there is a slight variation of rasa which happens in gujarat which they have sticks and you know <laughs> So that is, it is called Dandiya Ras, <laughs> so with Ras with sticks, but that is a perverted reflection of what is the original Rasa that took place between Sri Krishna and the Gopis. So Rasa, Rasa. I hope that satisfies your query. Yes. Mostly, yes Thank you. Mm -hmm. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think. Uh, uh, very much uh, our Keshava Maharaj and our Hari Parshat 
Prabhu for uh, giving such wonderful uh, insightful answers and mm, yes it is a great hope that some of the discussions or questions and answers were relevant to you and uh, I would like in closing just uh, highlight our uh, the, the question which I think is everyone's question immediately everyone's question when I'm here I see my devotion is heightened my Krishna consciousness is heightened but um, when I go uh, to my uh, normal life circumstances I do feel actually that it goes down and veers down and uh, Keshava Maharaj uh, I, I think that is for everyone I know in the Jabba retreats all over the world this is usually a question which is addressed at the end at festivals um, at the end this is an addressed how can we maintain this enthusiasm this clearness of consciousness how can we maintain it and the answer of Keshava Maharaj was I think very practical for every one of us first of all he said we must think of the goal in Sanskrit you call that prayojana bod an awareness of, of, of the goal of your light, life um, then we must make relevant st steps even if they are small towards that goal uh, uh, if I am saying wrongly please correct me Maharaj and the third was we need to create an environment that is inspiring us in our journey and I really think with this Bhakti immersion retreat we, uh, there is something beautifully uh, created between uh, the speakers and all of you it is really a very immersive uh, retreat in, in Krishna uh, his pastimes, his forms mm, his form etc mm, and uh, I would really encourage you to, ta to go through this think about where was something that stroke was striking you or it, it impacted you in a special way and then start to make a small practice perhaps you read every day um, um, uh, a verse uh, uh, and so on um, from, from, from about these subject matters which have caught your interest there's Padyavali the, uh, many of the books from which uh, uh, the uh, Hari Parshat quoted are out or you say no let me s read every day a little in the Krishna book to get to know Krishna a little bit or uh, you go to these very interesting uh, hints which you received in Keshava Maharaj's lectures and make a practice around it and, and that uh, uh, you know steady drops of water can wash away or veer down even a granite stone uh, so if you introduce a new practice a new habit that is doable for you you will see how uh, you will actually change and transform but uh, if you just go okay I consumed the festival and there was lasagna prasadam uh, also and what else was there it was about Krishna somehow uh, uh, then uh, it will not be as beneficial as it can be for you so this is a little <coughs> recommendation at the end I will give the microphone now to Gora Hari who gives us an overview about what will happen tomorrow and, and today most Mm. Hare Krishna, thank you so much to our wonderful uh, speakers for giving such a yeah, mind-blowing answer and clarifying answer. I think today was really an immersion. Uh, I hope no one drowned <laughs> into the... <laughs> Different perspectives. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
subject. <laughs> so uh, we have still tomorrow morning when we will have the normal program. Please uh, don't hesitate to remain in bed tomorrow morning if you are tired, because maybe some of you are driving and so that that you are fresh for your travel as well. But latest, please be here for the Darshan 7.15 and then for the lecture. We will have Isolina Sachin and Danasfami for the morning lecture. And then there will be more tips about how you can take the retreat home and that we will have from 11 to 1 o'clock. On the schedule, we had only uh, uh, Isolina Sachin and Danasfami and Isolina Keshava Maharaj for taking the retreat home. That was actually a mistake. We will also have Hari Pashat Prabhu together for this, uh, for this uh, section. So please take some good rest and hope no one gets indigestion, that you can process all what you heard today and see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.